In this lesson, we're going to go over the constant multiple rule for derivatives. So here's what you need to know. The derivative of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the derivative of the function. So all you need to do is find the derivative and multiply it by that constant. So let me give you an example. Let's say if we want to differentiate 3x to the fifth power. Now, the constant is 3. The function of x is x to the fifth. Now you can differentiate x to the fifth using the power rule. So let's rewrite the constant 3 and let's take the derivative of x to the fifth power. If you recall, the derivative of a variable raised to a constant like x to the fifth is n times x raised to the n minus 1. So that's going to be 5 times x raised to the 5 minus 1. Now, 5 minus 1 is 4. And now we can multiply the 5 by the 3. 3 times 5 is 15. And so this will give us 15 x to the fourth power. And that's the answer. Go ahead and try these examples. Find the derivative of 4x to the seventh power and also differentiate 5x to the ninth power using the constant multiple rule. So the constant is 4 and we need to differentiate x to the seventh power. So using the power rule, it's going to be 7x raised to the 7 minus 1. 7 minus 1 is 6. And then 4 times 7 is 28. So it's going to be 28x to the 6th power. Now for the next example, we have a constant of 5. And we need to find the derivative of x to the 9th power. So it's going to be 9 x raised to the 9 minus 1. And 9 minus 1 is 8. And 5 times 9 is 45. So we get 45 x to the a power. So that's a simple way in which you can use the constant multiple rule in order to find the derivative of a function. Now what is the derivative of x divided by 7? What do you think we need to do for that particular problem? So we have a fraction. We have a variable divided by a constant. What should we do? If you're confused by this problem, you don't need to be. It's not that hard. You just have to see it from a different perspective. Let's rewrite the expression. This expression is equivalent to 1 over 7 times x. So now, it's very similar to this problem, like the first three problems that we did. For example, if I want to find the derivative of 5x to the seventh power, I have a constant times a variable. This is just what I have here. This is going to be 5 times 7x raised to the 7 minus 1. And that's 5 times 7x raised to the 6. 5 times 7 is 35. So I'm going to follow the exact process. All I need to do in this problem is to separate the x and the 7. So the constant is 1 over 7. So this is going to equal the constant times the derivative of the function. And this is x to the first power. So if we use the power rule, it's going to be 1x raised to the 1 minus 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have x to the 0 power. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So 1 over 7 times 1 is simply 1 over 7. So that is the derivative of x divided by 7. Here's another one you could try. What is the derivative of x cubed divided by 15? Let's go ahead and get the answer for that one. So first, let's rewrite it. So the constant in this example is 1 over 15, and it's multiplied by x cubed. So using the constant multiple rule, it's going to be 1 over 15 times the derivative of x cubed, which is 3x to the 3 minus 1. 
3 minus 1 is 2. And so it's going to be 3x squared divided by 15. Now keep in mind 15 is 3 times 5. And 3 divided by 3 is 1, so we can cancel the 3. So you can write your final answer as x squared over 5, or you can write it as 1 fifth times x squared. Now what about this example? What is the derivative of negative 7x to the 6 divided by 4? Go ahead and try that. So let's separate the variable from the constant. So the constant is negative 7 over 4. It's a fraction. And the variable, or the function, f of x, is x to the 6th power. So we're going to rewrite the constant and differentiate x to the 6th power, which is going to be 6x to the 5th power. 6 minus 1 is 5. Negative 7 times 6 is negative 42. So we have negative 42x to the 5th power divided by 4. Now we could simplify 42 over 4. 42 is 21 times 2. And 4 is 2 times 2. So we can cancel a 2. So the final answer is negative 21x to the 5th power divided by 2. Now let's apply the constant multiple rule with square root functions. So what is the derivative of 4 square root x? So we can clearly see that the constant is 4, but we need to rewrite the square root function. The square root of x is x raised to the 1 half, and we need to use the power rule on that expression. So it's going to be the constant times the derivative of x to the 1 half, which is going to be 1 half x raised to the n minus 1, or 1 half minus 1. Now, 1 half minus 1, if you get common denominators, 1 is basically 2 over 2. So 1 over 2 minus 2 over 2 is negative 1 over 2. Now, we can multiply 4 and a half. Half of 4 is 2. So we have 2x to the negative 1 half. Now, we need to convert the negative exponent into a positive exponent. And we can do so if we take the variable x and move it to the bottom. So this is equal to 2 divided by x to the 1 half. Now we know that x to 1 half is basically the square root of x. So the final answer is 2 divided by the square root of x. And that's it. Let's use the constant multiple rule with rational functions. So differentiate 5 divided by x. Now just like the other problem, we need to rewrite this expression. So I'm going to take the x variable and move it to the top. Right now it's x to the 1 power on the bottom. But it's going to be x to the negative 1 when x is in the numerator. So we can see that the constant is 5. f of x is x to the negative 1. So now let's differentiate x to the negative 1 power using the power rule. So it's negative 1, x to the negative 1 minus 1. And negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So 5 times negative 1, that's going to be negative 5. Now, let's move the variable to the bottom. So we can convert the negative exponent into a positive exponent. So this is equal to negative 5 over x squared. And that is the answer. Now what about this one? What is the derivative of 5 divided by 2, and let's say it's the 7th root of x to the 4th. Go ahead and try that. So let's separate the constant from the variable. So the constant is 5 over 2, and it's multiplied by 1 over the 7th root of x to the 4th. Now, before we could find the derivative of that expression, we need to rewrite it. So first, let's convert it from radical form to exponential form. The seventh root of x to the fourth is x raised to the four over seven. Now, if you need some more examples, the ninth root of x to the fifth 
is x to the 5 over 9. The fourth root of x cubed is x to the 3 fourths, just in case if you have a question about how I got that answer. Now, we need to move the variable to the top. So this is going to be 5 over 2 times x raised to the negative 4 over 7. And now we can find the derivative of this expression using the power rule. So this is going to be 5 over 2. And then we're going to take the exponent, move it to the front. So that's going to be negative 4 over 7 times x. And then we need to subtract the exponent by 1. So what's negative 4 over 7 minus 1? 1 is the same as 7 over 7. And negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11. So what we now have is 5 over 2 times negative 4 over 7 x to the negative 11 over 7. Five times negative four is negative twenty, and two times seven is fourteen. And so this is what we now have. Now I'm going to convert this back into radical form, but first I'm going to take the variable and move it to the bottom. Right now we have this expression negative twenty x to the negative eleven over seven divided by fourteen. But that's equivalent to negative twenty over fourteen x to the positive 11 over 7. Now 20 is basically 10 times 2 and 14 is 7 times 2 so we can get rid of a 2 and at the same time we can convert this back into its radical form where it's the seventh root of x to the 11th power. So the final answer is negative 10 divided by 7, and then the 7th root of x to the 11. That's it. Now, I'm sure someone is going to ask me if we could simplify this expression further. And it turns out that we can. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So this is going to be negative 10 over 7. And then I'm going to break down x to the 11 as x to the 7 and x to the 4, because 4 plus 7 is 11. And then I'm going to separate this radical into two radicals. So the first one is the 7th root of x to the 7th, and the second one is 7th root of x to the 4th. Now, because these two both contain a 7, 7 divided by 7 is 1. And so the final answer, fully simplified, is negative 10 divided by 7 times x multiplied by the 7th root of x to the 4th power. And that is it. If you want to rationalize the expression, you can, but I don't think it's necessary. But if you want to, here's what you could do. You can multiply the top and the bottom by the 7th root of x cubed if you really want to take it to the next level. And so it's going to be negative 10, 7th root x cubed over 7x. x to the 4th times x cubed is x to the 7th power. So you have the 7th root of x to the 7th, which is about to be simplified into another x. So these 7s will cancel, and we're going to get another x. And so you can also write your answer as negative 10, 7th root of x cubed, divided by 7x squared, if you're told to rationalize any uh, radicals in the denominator.